Welcome to this session on advertising. Before we start, let me introduce the expert who has prepared this lesson today is Simrit Gulati who has many years of experience in advertising and has been teaching this subject for 23 years. And I am Garima Surana. Advertising helps in building the brand in the market and ensuring the success of the brand. It's an important tool for the long term and achievements of the brand. As advertising is a commercial activity and involves profits and returns on investment, it is constantly under review and scrutiny. One such scrutiny is about ethics and legality. In trying to achieve the objectives, there are times and occasions when it may cross limits of legality, ethics, decency or social responsibility. This is the big issue in discussion today and we need to look at it to see how the industry manages it. Also, how our legal and social framework keeps things under control. So it's a case of self-regulation and environmental control for the overall benefit of people and society. It is a fact that advertising agencies tend to go overboard when it comes to selling a product. Double meaning words, sexuality, violence, misleading, false and offensive advertising videos are now a part of our life. In the drive to get the attention and convince the consumer, the thin line between the right and the wrong is crossed. Advertising communication is a mix of arts and facts subservient to ethical principles. In order to be consumer oriented, advertisement will have to be truthful and ethical. It should not mislead the consumer. If it so happens, the credibility is lost. For parents and teachers, the greatest worry pertains to how children will perceive and incorporate the meaning of these ads in their young minds. This discussion can be divided into two parts. Ethical issues and legal issues. Though both seem similar, but we find that some differentiation is there and we need to look at things separately. Ethical deals with social concern and responsibility and enforcement cannot be forced but is more on voluntary basis. Legal relates to the law and there are definite enforceable methods available to deal with such points. What we also see is that discussions and opinions on social starts on ethical grounds. The matter gets investigated and views of the people and society mature so that a definite direction can be taken. This crystallizes into a legal definition over time. Matters of ethics get legalized or what are legal issues today started as ethical ones sometime in the past and finally culminated in a law being passed regarding it. Ethics are open to interpretation by different people and different sections of a society. But a law is final and binding without any anomalies and applies to all. Based on this, we find that certain areas come under the ambit of legality and can be dealt with immediately and decisions implemented, whereas for others, only a directive can be passed and implementation is voluntary or optional. Laws pertaining to advertising are explicit and clear and of course are based on ethics and responsibility. Certain products and services cannot be advertised or promoting using the mass media as they are objectionable as a product or habit. Alcohol and tobacco ads are not allowed as these products are known to be injurious to health, are cancer causing and their packaging also carries warning to this effect. 
baby foods not being allowed to advertise is for another reason. India is a developing economy where a major part of the population lives with the minimum of economic resources and our healthcare facilities are also being stretched to the limit. Medically, mother's milk is the best nutrition for the infant and it causes the least economic burden on the family. Keeping this in mind, India has signed the International Convention for Promoting Breastfeeding and Mother's Milk amongst its population. To support this, there is a ban on advertising for baby foods that are used as a substitute for mother's milk. This is done to discourage wrong habits among the people. Here again, we see that the packaging carries a warning informing the consumers that mother's milk is ideal for children up to the age of 6 months. In fact, this idea is now being promoted for infants up to the age of 1 year. This of course brings us to the topic of surrogate advertising. Surrogate advertising is advertising which embeds a brand or product message inside an advertisement which is ostensibly for another brand or product or substitute brands are used to promote the banned product. There are a number of reasons for companies to use surrogate advertising. One of the most common reasons is to circumvent a ban on direct advertisements of particular products. Many nations have laws restricting alcohol and tobacco advertising. For example, so many companies use surrogate advertising to market their products. Techniques used might include advertising another product with the same, sponsoring community events, issuing public service announcements or sponsoring sports teams. All of these activities technically do not violate the ban on but they still get consumers familiar with the company's branding. This clearly meets the legal requirements, but what about the ethics? Advertisers need to ensure that their ads are not offensive or violating the laws of the land. Ads should not violate the basic standards of decency, morality and religious beliefs of viewers. In India, certain ethics must be followed while creating ads. Advertisements promoting wrong habits are also a part of objectionable ads. A few years back, there was an ad for a washing powder that showed school children using their pens to spray ink on each other. The ad proved the good washing ability of the detergent, but there was an objection to it and the ad was considered offensive and had to be removed. Naya Multi Action Surf. Zyada daagon par zyada asar daan. The objection was to this concept of throwing ink at each other. It was felt that the ad was encouraging this behavior or rather giving sanction to this idea and thus promoting wrong habits in children. Another aspect of ethics is to do with ads addressing children or targeting them and thus tempting them. We know that children are able to influence brand choices at home to a considerable extent and we call this pester power. But are children equipped to take such decisions? Are they mature enough to handle such issues? Don't parents give in to this pressure keeping in mind the small families and their nuclear structure? And brands using it to their advantage by targeting ads to children and enticing them. And finally, is this ethical? So we come to the issue of ethical and we see that this relates to societal norms and values and there is no way of enforcing these other than by voluntary means. Advertisers and brands have to keep with the norms that are acceptable and are prevalent in the present times. Brands do behave responsibly and ensure that they do not offend people. Two important aspects under this are the targeting of children, the use of the female form. For the first case, we have the example of the Indian counterparts of seven MNCs. Seven major food and beverage companies have signed a unique in 2010 committing themselves to responsible and marketing to children. 
This is the first such self-regulatory pledge in India on the lines of the one in the European Union. Companies which have become signatories to the pledge are Indian subsidiaries of global majors such as Coca-Cola, Pepsi Company, Kellogg, International, General Mills and Hindustan Unilever. The pledge provides a framework for food and beverage companies to help promote healthier dietary choices and a more active lifestyle for Indian children. Besides, it also demonstrates their commitment to social responsibility in marketing their products to children. Consequently, the companies could stand to forego the lure of unrestricted advertising on hundreds of channels that the Indian market offers. Though this is a voluntary move towards self-regulation, it could was driven by increasing focus on obesity among an allegations that unrestricted consumption of fast food and beverages are some of the factors leading to it. For using the female form, the views are diverse and many. Most good brands do not like to offend the consumer and try to keep off such ideas. But we still have ads that do not appeal to the senses of the consumer. Objections can be raised and some action is taken. But what suits or does not suit a person varies from individual to individual and becomes difficult to justify or prove. So most of the time these issues remain unsettled. Also, research has shown the sensation and excitement the female form creates and there is a very fine dividing line between the aesthetic and the unesthetic. That's where the advertising fraternity felt the need for a body dealing with the self-regulation. Issues that are not within legal implementation but deal more with ethics are viewed and dealt with here. Thus we have the Advertising Standards Council of India ASCI. In order to enforce an ethical regulating code, the Advertising Standards Council of India was set up. Inspired by a similar code of the Advertising Standards Authority, ASA UK. To ensure the truthfulness and honesty of representations and claims made by advertisements and to safeguard against misleading advertising. To ensure that advertisements are not offensive to generally accepted standards of public decency. The safeguard against indiscriminate use of advertising for promotion of products which are regarded as hazardous to society or to individuals to a degree or a type which is unacceptable to society at large. And to ensure that advertisements observe fairness in competition so that the consumers need to be informed on choices in the marketplaces and canons of generally accepted competitive behaviour in business are both served. So, ASCI regulates brands and their ads for objectionable ads, ads that are in bad taste, misleading ads, copying or imitation of ideas and concepts and other issues that can disagree with the consumer. Complaints can be registered and then Further action is taken after introspection and discussion. Objectionable ads Objection to ads relating to distasteful ideas and visuals promoting wrong habits or ideas have been raised and complaints filed. Many of the cases have been redressed after consideration. Issues relating to distasteful visuals, explicit visuals or ideas or derogatory remarks or claims on other brands or people or pushing wrong values and habits are all the kind of concepts that come under this.
misleading ads ads that make false promises or exaggerate the claim or benefits all come under this category makeup wala look aajkal din bhar zaruri hai kyun full day click karo post karo click post aur fir like par din bhar makeup madam skin ka kya hoga relax ab makeup wale look ke liye no makeup sirf fair and lovely bb cream lovely bb cream fairness cream jo de makeup ka finish Many complaints relating to this have been handled by ASCI. Fairness creams or other such beauty treatments, balms, medicines, and ointments are some of the products that have been scanned for this. That is where we see ads carrying an asterisk of conditions apply or results may vary. Brands that talk of a new formula or new variant have been questioned. as to how long can this be considered as new now it has been defined very precisely that the term new can be used only up to 1 year from the time of introduction another way of preventing the consumer from being misled by the brand or its ad ads making false claims especially for medicinal products or cosmetics are another area where ASCI has settled matters the drug and magical remedies act has provisions to control the advertisements of drugs in certain cases and to prohibit the advertisement for certain purposes of remedies alleged to possess magic qualities and to provide for matters connected therewith there is also a legal ban on advertising for medicines that require a medical prescription only ointments balms and symptomatic pain and congestion relievers that do not require a doctor's order can be advertised these are what are called otc or over the counter drugs all medical drugs have a standard formulation irrespective of which company manufactures it so there is no need to communicate to the consumer on the mass media In this case the doctor knows that he knows best. It's these OTC ones that may have different flavors or packaging or variants to suit the tastes of an individual so they need to inform or reach out to the consumer and so can advertise. Celebrities This is another aspect where regulation is required and things are being put into place regarding celebrities and brand endorsement. People have immense faith in celebrities and also get influenced by them to a great extent. This is what brands and ads take advantage of and use them as endorsers or ambassadors. ASCI specifies that advertisements of products which by law either require a health warning in their ads or cannot be purchased by minors should not feature personalities from the field of sports music and cinema so indiscriminate use of celebrities in promoting the wrong ideas can be controlled in fact celebrity brand endorsers for pan masala have been sent legal notices by some of the state governments in january 2016 पर्दे उठ गए यादों से कुछ यादों पे छा गए कुछ सपने चल दिए आंखों से कुछ आंखों में आ गए ये छोटी छोटी बातें ही वक्त को ताजा रखेंगी एक रिवाज है ये जिसको सदियां साझा रखेंगी बारातियों का स्वागत पान पराग से ही होता है अनादर इशू रिलेटेड टू द सेलिब्रिटीज 
is where the celebrity promoting the brand is made equally responsible for the performance of the brand. Discussions are going on about holding the endorser responsible for the brand, especially if the brand runs into trouble regarding quality or misleading ads. The law is yet to be finalized, but this would definitely control the celebs from making false claims and promises in ads and also prevent them from going on a brand endorsement spree. This would mean that there would be some control over not misleading the consumer or not fooling him with the glamour of the stars. Copying of ads. There have been cases of brands copying the ads of a competing brand. And again, ASCI settled the complaint. An important point with self-regulatory bodies is that consumer has to register a complaint or raise an objection and only then is the matter taken into consideration and settled. Also, opinions may differ and the members of the discussion panel may not come to a consensus depending on various perceptions. What we need to conclude is that there is a method available for looking into the ethics and value systems of the people. Related to this is the concept and interpretation of comparative ads. Comparative ads. Ads that compare one brand with another and try to prove the superiority of one over the other are what are classified as comparative ads. Comparison can be direct and the competing brand can be named or the message is indirect where in the comparison the competition is not named but just indicated. These come under the ambit of both legal and ethical issues. Legally, if the facts are correct and are supported by data, or to put in other words, the facts would hold in a court of law, such messages can be made and sent. The only thing is that in doing this, at times, degrading the competing brand becomes distasteful and thus ethically wrong. It also reflects badly on the brand making such claims. Also, it could amount to defamation of the competition and come into legal area and action taken accordingly. So comparative advertising has to be handled well and accuracy or correctness of the message as well as the aesthetics and content are to be taken care of. Claims made in such ads are usually supported by research findings like scientific studies or surveys by market research bodies and are specifically mentioned in the communication. The Monopolies and Restrictive Trade Practices Act 1969 and now the Competition Act 2002 deals with any misleading, false and wrong representation either in writing, that is in advertisements, warranty, guarantee etc. or oral at the time of sale, actual or intended. Even if actual injury or loss is not caused to the consumer or buyer constitutes as unfair trade practices. So, comparative ads have to take cognizance of this. Laws that deal with advertising cover various aspects. So, we have the provision to take legal action against advertisements that are based on caste, race, nationality, colour and creed. Goes against any provision of the Indian constitution or ridicules the father of the nation, the national emblem, part of constitution or the image of a national leader or a state dignitary. Incite people towards criminal activity, cause disorder and violence in the country, breach laws or glorify obscenity or violence in any form. Glorify terrorism, communal mass cares, criminality and so on. Display distasteful visual content that goes beyond the established norms of good taste and decency. Exploit and encourage social evils like child marriage, bride burning and dowry system. That advertise for alcohol, baby foods and tobacco and products containing tobacco. 
there are provisions available under the law for dealing with these cases. The following acts are used for the legal implementation of issues relating to advertising. Drug and Magic Remedies Objectionable Advertisement Act 1954 Defamation Act 1963 Monopolies and Restrictive Trade Practices Act 1969 Consumer Protection Act 1986 and 2002 Competition Act 2002 as a brief summing up of this topic, we see that advertising that is political or religious in nature deals with goods and services that are defective or have deficiencies, misleads the public to infer that the item has some special, miraculous or a supernatural quality which is anyway difficult to prove. The audio and video of which is excessively loud that endangers the safety of children or produces any sort of perversion or interest that prompts them to adopt or imitate unhealthy practices, that is offensive, indecent suggestive, vulgar or repulsive in its theme, will not be permitted under the law. Ethically, also it would offend the sentiments of the consumer or the public, so should be avoided. The advertising is for the brand and should be an aid for building the brand. In no way should it become bigger than the product or the brand it advertises and hamper the progress of the brand building activity. Also the advertising is an aid for the consumer to comprehend products, brand and ideas and the ad should not mislead or create wrong impressions in the mind of the consumer. It would be appropriate to remember the golden words of David Ogilvy, the famous ad guru. A good advertisement is one which sells the product without drawing attention to itself. That is all for today. Hope you enjoyed and found it useful. Goodbye. Thank you.